Great line, great line, great line, great line, but what is it about? You're not telling the story, speak in plain English. At the end of the day, a song is a story. If the music is very happy, you might want to lean the lyric dark. Don't pick some abstract phrase that people just never say. Yeah, that's a great tag. Everything has to point back towards the chorus. You want sticky lines that might catch people's attention or even seem somewhat controversial. You just want to speak to them where the listener goes, oh my God, that's how I feel. Wow, they said it in a way that like I haven't thought before. Okay, so now we've arrived at a melody that we like, and it's time to really hone down and chip away at the lyric and concept. Sometimes I walk into a session and I already have a concept. I know this is the title, this is the concept, or I just experienced this in my life, and I wanna write about this, and very often that happens, especially when you're working with artists uh, or country writers. Those are the two times when uh, concept might actually come before melody or lyric or anything else. A lot, of, a lot of country sessions, somebody walks into the room and says, hey, I got an idea, why don't we call the song this? Or an artist might say, I really want to write a song about this. For the purposes of these lessons though, I'm not walking in with the concept. I intentionally tried to like erase my brain and walk in with nothing. So you can see what happens when I start with nothing and where, where I end up. What you're gonna see is me ch combing through the melody, trying to see if there are any words or phrases that my subconscious placed in there because your subconscious is so powerful and so strong and when you shut your brain off and you're just spitballing gibberish melodies with phonetics and syllables and vowels, your brain will fill in an occasional phrase or lyric or word or line and very often when you say, oh, that song is brilliant or genius, those are those genius moments because you, you didn't really do it. I actually believe it's like God communicating through us. And some other people think it's the great spirit or other things. Whatever you think, whatever you believe in, it's magic. And when that happens, I've learned when to lean into it and when to, to lean away from it. There will be times when you come up with a phrase that's super catchy and fits the shape of the melody and the track, but it's really generic and you need to shy away from those. You need to learn, as you write more and more, you'll learn when to listen to your subconscious and when your subconscious is trying to trick you. And delineating between those two things is the, is the separating factor of a decent songwriter and a hit songwriter. You need to be your own editor. So you're gonna see me edit through these lyrics and the first thing I'm gonna try to arrive at is what am I trying to say? What does this music make me feel? Like what kind of song is this? Is it a love song? Is it a breakup song? Is it a party song? Is it a drinking song? Is it a uh, human spirit inspiring song. Whether you know it or not, your brain remembers kind of everything and it will associate the music with maybe some song you heard when you were a child that, that you only listened to in the summertime and now you're writing a song about summer and you don't know why, but you need to lean into those. Wherever the music is leading you, let that influence the lyric. Sometimes though, if the music is very poppy and it's for a pop artist and the music is very happy, you might wanna lean the lyric dark and edgy because too much of a good thing in a song is actually too much. So one, one formula that I have is if I have a super pop major progression and a super pop melody, I'm gonna try and make the lyric a little messed up. And of course it depends on the artist you're pitching it to, but just, that's just like a, a general rule of thumb that I like to employ is, is try to steer the lyric slightly dark if the music is slightly happy. And the reverse is true. If the music is kind of dark, maybe make it a love song, like a sad love song, right? So try to think of those things in terms of balance as you're writing, um, so you don't end up with something that's just too, too, too poppy and too happy for its own good. Uh, but at the end of the day, a song is a story. When you arrive at your concept, your tagline or your title or, or, what, or your hook or what have you, that's the first thing you need to focus on once you have the shape of the melody. You don't need to start on the verse, I would discourage you from doing that um, unless you just get stuck on a chorus. And the only reason I say that is because I have spent thousands of hours writing amazing verses and then gotten to the chorus and realized I don't have a chorus and then you don't have a song. So if, if you think you can do it, try to start writing the chorus first and that might inform the rest of the song. For those of you who are like, I can't, that's fine. Start with the verse and the verse might tell you what the chorus wants to be. It can work both ways. Find the chorus, find the tag, get your chorus settled, something that you're really happy with. It should tell a complete story. It should have a balanced shape. The ending of it should be 
uh, maybe unexpected or satisfying. It should be the closing, the final Lego brick in your Lego castle that just makes the whole thing perfect. That last line, that turn of phrase, that's what you're looking for. I'm gonna be trying to arrive at that, and once I have my chorus nailed down and I feel confident in it, you're gonna see me then jump into the verse and pre-chorus and then put the final touches on. I'll then probably walk away, take a breather, come back with fresh ears, which I always say is so critical to just walk out of the room, get a coffee, take a break, clean your ears out, come back in, listen with fresh ears, and then you'll see me go through and I'm going to be fine tuning the lyric. I'll be changing words up until the very last second. That's just my process. Like I might change, you know, an and to but, right? Uh, or the to the, or whatever. I will go through and try and slightly tweak everything until when I read it on paper, I can read the lyric top down and it reads like a story and it sounds like something a human would actually say and not just songwriter and flowery and whatever. I'm really big on songs actually making sense and just being like a more intelligent, creative, colorful way of telling a basic human experience. All right, so now we're gonna get into lyrics, right? I have the song mapped out. There's not a formula to coming up with a great lyric. Um, there are tricks, there are cheats. The book titles very often make phenomenal song titles. Movie titles make phenomenal song titles. Daily conversation. Um, quotes, uh, I have a box of quotes that I've had for years that when I get stuck, I pull from. I don't really have any lyrics. I have like gobbledygook and like a couple lines like, like, Baby, I'm thinking we should waste some time. Good tequila and some friends on mine. Okay, listen, listen. Like, babe, babe, I think we should waste some time. Good tequila with some cheap ass wine. Something like that. Like, spend the money on the tequila, not the wine, which seems like kind of a country thing to do. Um, I'm just gonna start writing stuff as I hear it. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump straight to the chorus. See if we can get a chorus. A couple, and a couple other ideas that popped into my head, days like these, you know, that phrase kept coming up in my gibberish. I try to interpret my gibberish, and see what my subconscious is trying to say here. When you bring that wine, when it comes, why are we so mad? Every time you wanna make this bad, every time I like it, things all that. If you wanna, we can take the back. Days like these, I think that might sing better there. Cause this before you might be all I know. I'm just gonna come write stuff. Days like these, cause days like these, not much I need. Days like these, not much I need, just. Somewhere. Just somewhere I call home. Um, all right, let's see if I can arrive at a concept here. What am I trying to say? So I'll just loop, oftentimes I'll loop the chorus and just kind of figure out what is it, what's the best thing, what's the most impactful thing. Anywhere you go, days are fun to buy. Days that I want but I don't I Yeah, anywhere you try. So I don't like anywhere you go. Like me, 15 years ago, would have said, oh, that's really catchy, let's use that. I just think that's lame. And it, even though it sings well, so the issue you have when you're doing gibberish is very oftentimes you fall in love with the phonetics and the sound of certain consonants and vowels, um, but you gotta be careful of that. You gotta tread lightly because, uh, you know, don't get addicted to bad lyrics, it's dangerous. So I try to change my, I try to change my gobbledygook gibberish as quick as possible so I don't get too married to it. Anywhere you go, days are fun to buy. Days that I want but I don't I know. Now that we got time, let's Here's a funny phrase. I mean like everybody's locked down with pandemics and all this. I don't want to write about a pandemic. I like to, Keep it somewhat general, but like maybe address it topical, but not be so specific that three years later you're like, well, 
that song just reminds me of a year I didn't like. But if you can if you can check both boxes and be topical and write about something that is happening, but also be omnipresent and universal and uh, broad, then it checks both boxes. So like the first phrase that comes to my mind is like, now that we got time. Now that we got time, uh, let me see, let's see if this works. And I'm thinking Bieber, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Kane, even though I know that in theory, technically I probably can't pitch to either of them on this one. Now that we got time, but let's pretend we are. Now that we got, I'm gonna loop this real quick. Now that actually I'm gonna sing it one at a time and just see, see if it how it sounds singing it. It may suck. Now that we got time, days I want you love, days I want you I don't want you love. Now that we got bells, put me on the love, they don't want you I do. Time. Baby, I'm thinking we should Baby, now that we got time. Baby, I'm thinking we should waste. And obviously, if I, if I use now that we got time, I can't start the song. Well, maybe I could. Now, maybe I think we should waste some time. It might, it might work. I don't want to. I don't, I don't. One thing I, I know for sure that I want to keep right now is the first half of this pre. So as I come up with lines that sing well to me while I'm tracking, I, I try to record them in that moment so it's done. So I'm gonna record that pre because I love it. Cause days like these not much I need Just somewhere I call home So I'm doing, I'm going to like processing the thoughts in my head, which is what I do in sessions. I don't just like blurt out every stupid line I think of. I have to like, if I think I have something brilliant, I have to like flesh it out in my head. And like on this one, I'm really close and I'm either gonna be very excited in a minute or I'm just gonna have to start a whole new concept. But I have something that could be cool. And when I think about, again, I'm targeting for the purposes of this class. I'm targeting, I'm thinking, okay, Justin Bieber, uh, Kane Brown, something that could work in pop and country land. And so that informs the lyric that I'm obviously going for here. And that's, you'll see in a second. So my thought was, and this might, I have to sing it. The thing is a lot of times things look good on paper and a lot of great lyrics look good on paper and then you sing it and you're like, ah oh, man, that, 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 that read a lot better than it that was sung, you know what I mean? But the truth is, if I'm thinking very targeted Bieber and Kane Brown or somebody in country, like somebody doing a country crop, uh, uh, pop crossover, which right now is on fire. There's like a lot of artists, top five song in the country right now is a country artist featuring Charlie Puth. So my thought, original thought was, I was chasing the whole idea of like it's a weird time and I think I can address the fact that it's a strange time. I said it in the verse, I said, or the pre-chorus, I said, days like these is not much I need, just somewhere I call home. So my whole idea was, in my gibberish, I said something like, when I was looping that chorus and singing it, I said like, I know there's a God. Okay, and I'm thinking about Bieber. Like, the whole song could be called like, saved, or like, saved by you. And my idea was the guy telling his wife like, 
I was saved by you. The fact that I found you, the fact that we came across each other, it's like two ships passing in the night. It's infinitesimally difficult and, and miraculous that we discovered each other. It's like God ordained. And so I'm chasing that line. How do we make that not cheesy? How do we make it clever so it could work in a country context, but work in a... So then I thought I had that phrase, you know, I know there's a God because he brought me to you and you put up with all the stupid things I do. If it was pop, you'd say stupid shit, I do. And yeah, I've read the Bible, not saying it ain't true. What I'm about to say might turn the preachers blue, but baby, I was saved by you. So I need to sing it and see if it tracks. I know that, I know there's a God because he brought me to you. And I could hear baby singing that or a country artist. And you put up with all those stupid things I do. Yeah, I read the Bible, not saying it ain't true. But I'm about to say my better than it do. Baby, I was saved by you. So I think the preacher's blue line I might be able to beat. It, uh, it was just the first thing that came to my mind. Baby, I just want to get too saved by you because that's the tag, I think. Well, I'm going to sing the, what I have right now and it might lead me to that third line and then I can rip through the rest of the song. But I know there's a guy Cause he led me to you and you put up with all the stupid things I do Yeah, yeah I've read the Bible Think most of it is true But I was lost as hell Now you wanna be you Baby, I was saved by you Yeah, that's a great tag. That's a good one. I can say that's a good tag, cause that's a good tag. I just need to f fix the rest of it real quick. Yeah. I think not saying it in truth is better. Yeah, I've read the Bible, not saying it ain't true. Let's see how this sounds so far. So far, I think I really like it. <clears throat> but I know there's a God, cause he led me to you. And you put up with all the stupid things I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. put up with all the stupid things I do. I know there's a God, cause he led me to you. Cause he led me to you. And you put up with all the stupid things. Cause he led me to you. And you put up with all the stupid things. I there we go. All right, I'll come back to that line. It needs to be super good, super sticky, and not offend uh, people to go to church. That's the other thing. So part of the, my whole like concept behind this and why I would say, because this is obviously not like a contemporary Christian song, but why I would say, I know there's a guy because he brought me to you. You want sticky lines that, that might catch people's attention or catch them off guard or even seem somewhat controversial. Like, like this is like, oh, what is he saying? Like is, you know, I know there's like, Immediately, you, if you bring in God to anything or something that's somewhat controversial, uh, your ears perk up, and there's got to be a way to like thread that needle where you're like referencing something everybody knows, but you're not, you're not like I'm not undermining it or like offending people, but at the same time being kind of, kind of edgy and like kind of trying to do something that like is, uh, I mean. I guess irreverent to a degree, but like that's music. Music is irreverent. Like all the, some, some of the best, biggest songs of all time, there's an irreverence to them. Um, not disrespectful, but just like, a, you know, an irreverence. It's, you know, you can blame rock and roll for that. Um, Cause days like these are much I need Just somewhere I call home Yeah What I'm not gonna do is rhyme everything with days like these. 
And now we got to get to something like, if you're going to say, I believe in God, you can't have it come out of nowhere. I don't want to make this whole song talking about God stuff or the, you know, the Bible or like getting too in the weeds on that topic. Um, but I, I do know that this stuff obviously comes up a lot in country music. But it, I, what makes it interesting, again, in, in fake pretend land where I'm pitching a song to Bieber and Kane Brown at the same time as a duet, like that's something they both can get down with. You know, I believe in God because he brought me to you, you know, you be, and you put up with all the stupid things I do. Like, uh, yeah, I've read the Bible. I'm not saying it ain't true. But in fact, if I was saved by anyone, I would say by you. And maybe that is the line. I just spoke it out right there. How about that? We've got, you know, days like these, not much I need, just somewhere I call home. And I want to get to the I believe in, you know, I know there's a God line. I want to get to that line. So I go, I can't just come out of nowhere. And my brain goes, we need to start talking about heavenly things or angels or like something that foreshadows that's leading us to, I, I know there's a God. So like, you know, late at night, you know, late and somewhere I call home. Um... Got my stars for you, what you are. Angels riding on. Angels that angels been alone. You're all my. You're like, okay, so let's t describe this person. Uh, the, 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 these days, all I need is somewhere I call home. Um, let me look at what I've got going on here lyrically. I have another possible line. Yeah, I read the Bible, not saying it ain't true, but I was lost as hell and someone pulled me. Th and I was lost as hell and someone pulled me. Th when I was lost as hell, yeah, but I'm not saying it's true, but I was lost as hell and someone pulled me through. Baby, I was saved by you. That's pretty strong. That might work. And you want to make sure your lyrics read top down. They need to read. I always take a break and like, oh, a lot of mistakes people make is they put a lot of um, disconnected great ideas is what I say. It's a great idea and it has no connection with the line before it or after it. You're writing in like these abstract prose that are disparate from each other. So one creative line that's great by itself, but then it doesn't connect, it doesn't tell a story. And the thing you have to remember about lyrics, the chorus is king. Everything has to point back towards the chorus. Every single line of the song has to push the, forward, the story forward. It has to tell the story. It doesn't matter how good it is. Like, it, you know, you can get away with creative license. You can have the occasional, like, you know, what's that one line in that Selena song, my metaphorical gin and juice. Like, I love those lines. They're colorful, they're amazing. But even that is still telling the story. Like, you just have to tell the story. The, the single biggest enemy of songwriting is convolution, convoluted lyrics. Great line, great line, great line, great line, but what is it about? What is it saying? Where is it going? Like, you're not telling the story. And I, I very often like to say, speak in plain English. Like, if you can't read the song top down and it doesn't read, like a super poetic, articulate, intelligent person. <laughs> like that's how my favorite songs read. They were like, this is someone who clearly understands what they're trying to say. They're saying it in, in such a clever way, in such a different, unique way. It's like when you're looking for concepts, you're looking for tags, lines, choruses, a simple thing is what's a phrase that you hear people say all the time, but you just haven't heard it in a song? And I can point out different songs that I've written that, that, uh, where I've done that. Uh, one Republic, Stop and Stare. That was our second single. Uh, that was a hit for us. It's that phrase, Stop and Stare. You, you know, I saw a car accident, Stop and, you know, you stop and stare. Like, it's a phrase that people say all the time, but nobody put it in a song. Even It's Too Late to Apologize is a phrase people know, but nobody says it. Um, you have more abstract songs, you know, like Halo that doesn't, nobody says that really, right? But it still worked. Uh, and that phrase people say all the time, rumor has it. Rumor has it this, rumor has it that, rumor has it. That was where I got the phrase for Adele. She said it. I think that's really important when you're looking for titles. Don't pick some abstract like, like phrase that people just never say. Like, uh, like I'm trying to think of something ridiculous, but like, um, you know, like I can't really think of anything terribly abstract right now for some reason. But you know the point I'm making. Don't don't come with some convoluted or high concept. You're too smart for your own good. Don't come with one of those phrases where it's like, wow, you know, really, really poetic, but that's not gonna sing. Like, I, like you, the phrase, you should be able to automatically, when someone says the phrase, you should be able to sing it. Like, you could come up with four or five melodies on the phrase. Like, when with, with Sucker, it was like, ob the obvious phrase, which it became was, I'm a sucker for you, but it could have been, I'm a sucker for you. I'm a sucker, you know, I'm a sucker for you, you. Like there's a million ways you could take that line. But if you're like, you know, 
if it was more complicated than that, like, you know, I'm enamored by you or like, you know, charmed. Don't use phrases that like are just dated and no one uses anymore. Like really it needs to, people are at their core are basic. Most people are very, very basic and people aren't comp highly complicated like in terms of how they communicate, right? We like things that are common. That's why, you know, uh, McDonald's has served 19 trillion hamburgers, right? It's common, it's every day. And then five-star restaurants serve 100. Like it's, it's specific and narrow. If you're trying to write for the masses and have hit records, you wanna write for the masses. But you don't wanna write songs that are so dumb or stupid that you make the listener dumber by listening to it. Even though some of the, sometimes, I'm not gonna name the songs, but sometimes those songs work too, usually they're dance records. Um, you just wanna to speak to them where the listener goes, I relate to that, oh my God, that's how I feel. Wow, they said it in a way that like I haven't thought before. That's what people are looking for. It's like, I totally relate with that, I feel that. I've just never had the words to say it. And that's what songs do for people. So you have to, you have to be able to read. So right now, I know there's a God, cause he brought me to you and you put up with all the stupid things I do. That's endearing. <coughs> Yeah, I've read the Bible, not saying it ain't true. But when I was lost as hell and someone pulled me through, baby, I was saved by you. That, to me, is like clever and cute and somewhat irreverent. God help me, forgive me, please. But you get the point. It like kind of rides that line. Um, so now we got the pre-chorus lyric. We got, because day, days like these, not much I need, just somewhere I call home. And then I need to get it point back to the person. I was saved by you. So what does she do? What is she? Is she an angel? Maybe she's an angel. Maybe this person's an angel. So it's like, stars align, uh, you know, and the, the stars align, baby, bright. The stars align just right on time, like something like that. Let's hear what we got here. Cause days like these are much I need to somewhere I call home. Yeah. And obviously I'm not going to start with babe if I'm saying baby I was saved by you. All right, so we need the second half of the pre-chorus real quick. Cause days like these not much I need to somewhere I call home. Yeah. I got someone to hold. I got someone to hold. See how much I need. I got someone to hold. That's great. There's days like these, not much I need. I got someone to hold. I lay down, lay my, lay, lay my head down. Let's we'll see. There's days like these, not much I need. I got someone to hold. And when I lay me down to sleep, I love that. Days like these, not much I need. Got, I got someone. Days like these, not much I need. I got someone to hold. When I lay me down to sleep, when I lay me down to sleep, I think about the soul. Lay me down to sleep, I'm ready with your soul. Wait. Oh, that's right, I changed the melody at the end. Oh my God, thank God. I was like, wait a minute, how am I gonna do that when the chorus starts before? So listen to this. So I'm gonna go. Yeah. And when I lay me down to sleep, I want you to pray about a little little things I know. I should say a prayer, but I'm <laughs> I should say, let me down to sleep. Oh not leave me down to sleep. I'm thankful that I'm I'm thankful that I'm thankful that I did it do. I know there's a God. So there we go. Cause days like these not much I need, I got someone to hold. And when I lay and when I lay me down to sleep, I'm thankful da 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 do. I know there's a God, because he led me to you. See, that's how it should read. I'm thankful. I'm a 
All right, so I'm gonna test a line here, and I might, this is one that I know I'm probably gonna flag it. I'll probably change it later because I know what I want it to say, and it's might work, it might not. But I'm gonna track this pre into the chorus, and then we might be ready to go here. Days like these, not much I need. I got someone to hold. Yeah, cause days like these. All right. I've got days, and here we go. And when I lay me down to sleep, I'm praying like a sinner that she's waking up and ready to go. Yeah, I think that might be it. The right amount of irreverent. Ready to go. I know there's a guy. Up, I'm ready to go. Yeah. Adding the little yeah as a thing, it might be lame, it might work. Okay. Not saying it ain't, ain't true. Yeah, I was lost as hell, and something pulled me through. Baby, I'm saved by you. And something pulled me through. Baby, I was saved by you. Oh yeah, that's strong. Okay. Something pulled me through. Baby, I was saved by you. All right. So we have a pre, we have a chorus, and right now it's feeling strong. And I'm gonna knock a verse out, and then we we're pretty much there. So check it out. Things over there. If you wanna, we can take that back. Pre-chorus. That feels strong. That feels strong. I can get behind that in a Nashville session, maybe even in a pop session. Um, that reads. So now if you read it, it should read. It should make sense. So like, it's days like these, not much I need. I, I got someone to hold. And when I lay me down to sleep, I'm praying like a sinner that she's waking up and ready to go. Little fun, little sexy time, little flirt. I know there's a God, because he brought me to you, and you put up with all the stupid things I do. And yeah, I've read the Bible. I'm not saying it ain't true. I was lost as, I was lost as hell, and something pulled me through. Baby, I was saved by you. That's, that's feeling solid. I need a verse. 